Okay, I want to pick up where we left off in that last tutorial where I showed how to design the Einstein tile and what really ended up being a lesson on using the move tool to move bodies around and place them and arrange them exactly where you want. Now today I want to continue with that and jump into components and joints. Uh, so we're going to convert the set of bodies here to a component and then we'll look at taking that tile component and arranging it to create our pattern of tiles. But before we jump into that, I want to address uh, some of the comments from my previous tutorial, uh, which uh, some of you are very visual and you saw right away that I could have gotten uh, exactly here by simply using the mirror tool because um, a bunch of these tiles are just actual um, reflections of themselves. Now in that last tutorial I wanted to keep it focused on using the move tool but I thought it was a good point that I wanted to address and it's uh, actually uh, really quick to do so we'll go ahead and uh, look at that right now. Now if you look at this tile you can see that you can just mirror that about this face here and the neat thing is you can select the face on the uh, exact body that you are going to mirror. So here, if, you know, choosing this and reflecting it about this face here will give us uh, that mirrored body. And so you have the same thing here and here, um, and then you can do this with this and then this with this. So let's, let's look at that really quick. Now I'm going to take the timeline here of my design and just bring it back to before any of those... Uh, mirrored features and you can see here we're back to our hexagon created by our different kites. So let's go ahead and grab our mirror tool by going to create down to mirror and I'll select this body here. Make sure your object type is set to bodies. Our mirror plane is going to be this face right there and I want to change the operation from join to new body. I want to keep them all as separate bodies uh, and there we have it and we'll just repeat that. So repeat mirror I'll choose this body here. My mirror plane is this face. New body. Whoops. Ah, messed up there. One more time. Here, mirror here, and then a new body. And click OK. And then we just have to repeat that two more times. This body, we're going to mirror about this face. Click OK. And then finally, this body here will mirror that about this face here change that to new body there we go and now we can simply get rid of these two bodies over here I'll shift select both of these bodies right click and go to remove body and there we have it so here we have all our separate kites arranged into our hat tile all right and now I'm going to combine this into one body by going to modify combine select the first body shift select the last body here my operation is a join and I'll click OK. And all the bodies will collapse here to my one body. All right, now that we have that one body, it turns out when you pattern these, you are going to need the mirrored copy or the reflected tile in order to make this work. Um, so most of the bodies end up being the regular one, but every once in a while you need a reflection. So here we're going to create a mirror of this body to give us that reflected tile. And to do that, we'll go to create down to mirror again. Mirror tool is the star of the show today. Choose our body, uh, choose our mirror plane. For the plane, I'll go ahead and select my ZY plane here. Uh, pick new body and then click OK. And then I'm just going to grab my move tool here and just uh, move this over so they're not overlapping. OK, there we go. All right, now that I have two bodies here, uh, one mirror or the reflection of the other, first let's uh, name the second one here. I'm just going to call that mirror. And we'll take these bodies and convert them to components. And to do that, I'll just simply right click, go down to create components from bodies, and then repeat that with my other body here. Right click, create components from bodies. Now I've got two components and you can tell they're components by the little cube symbol right there. Now the main reason for converting these from bodies to components is that you can't add joints to bodies. So if you plan on adding joints, you have to convert your bodies to components first or design them as components from the beginning. I'm going to click on shift N to remove component color toggling here and I'll hit A for parents and let's add our own colors here. I'll drag a blue aluminum here for the regular tile and a gray aluminum here for the mirror tile. And we can even change the color here, maybe like a yellow. All right, 
done. Okay, now before we start arranging them, I'm gonna create a bunch of copies here of the regular tile. And to do that, I'll simply right click on the tile here under the browser, go down to copy, and then right click again, but this time on the top of my component here on the browser and go to paste new. You wanna make sure to choose paste new there instead of paste. Click OK. It doesn't look like anything happened, but if I move this, you see that there's another tile right below it. Okay, and we'll simply repeat that a few more times. I'm going to right click, paste new. Okay, so now I have seven tiles and one mirror. And I'm going to grab one of my regular tiles and move it over here. Just uh, position it somewhere here. And then I'm going to pin it in place. So if I click on it, I see that it's this tile here, right click, go to ground and click on capture position and you see a little pin there. So this tile is not grounded and I can't move it. And I'll be able to use joints to arrange the rest of the tiles. So here the approach I took was just to simply drag this tile over here. And the fact that they're components, you can simply drag them without, you know, using your move tool. And I'm going to now use my move tool to rotate it. And just like you would with a real puzzle, I'm just going to sort of start moving this to see where it's going to want to line up. And here I kind of see that this edge here will want to line up with this edge over here. So I don't need to get it exact just to kind of see it. And this part is actually not even necessary. If you're able to see exactly where one edge and the other one goes, you don't have to start rotating it. Um, but I find it really helps me to get it close first so I can see it better. And then I'll click OK. And then I'm going to go here to Assemble, down to Joint. And I can choose, you know, either this edge or this edge. But what you want to do is uh, choose uh, corresponding edges that will line up. And I'll hover over the edge and snap to that midpoint there. And then orbit here and find the midpoint of this edge. And uh, that joint will you know, make them go perfectly together. Uh, you do want to make sure for your motion here, you have that set to rigid and then click OK. And once you set it once, it'll keep it as the um, default for the rest of them. So, all right, so I've got that perfect. And now I'm just going to bring it over and start turning it again, just to see um, where my next edges are going to line up. So let me rotate this and I think we can bring this about right here and that'll fit there so that looks good and the shortcut for joint is just J and I can select this edge here snap to that midpoint and then select this edge there there we have it and then click OK and I'll just keep going around the circle doing exactly that so let me grab this one bring it somewhere over here right click move copy just start turning this. Uh, I think we're going to go right here. And I've done this a few times, so I kind of have an idea of how these go together. Um, but what you do have to be careful here is that there are different ways that these can actually line up. Um, and it looks like it's working. But then when you go to you know, position the next piece, you'll find that you're going to have gaps in between them. So even though they may fit certain ways, um, you'll find yourself, you'll have to kind of keep coming back and rearranging them because there is a correct way that they have to go. Um, so here, let me bring the next one here and move, rotate, and let's see. Sometimes this, again, resets, so I want to change this from face to components and select this. And then we'll go back and rotate it. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of actually a fun exercise to do if you enjoy puzzles and kind of help yourself um, with your spatial awareness of your of your mind i'm uh, honestly i'm not that great with <laughs> spatial information um so you know i find if i'm doing this with other people they're able to see right away oh that edge lines up over there um but i have to kind of you know do this every time and move it and just start rotating it to see and I don't usually see it until like edges are close together to line up where other people are sort of really good at flipping things in their minds. Um, you know, and if, if you're one of those, this will probably be a lot easier for you. So I'm just going to do one just sort of complete loop around that first grounded piece. And I want to get to that mirrored part. Let me click OK here. 
and which is going to be the next one here. So if I bring this one here, oh, another thing I want to point out, actually, um, you saw how I moved this over, but if I orbit, it's way up top here. When you do move components like that, um, you want to be at a direct like top view, because then when you do move it, it actually keeps it on that same plane. It just makes things a little bit easier. It doesn't really affect it with joints, because it's still going to line them up perfectly, but it does make it a little bit easier to sort of line up things before you put your joints in place. Okay, so with this one, I can actually kind of get it to work. Let me see. I can, I can find a spot where this can go. It's not going to go there. Maybe like this. And like, no, that's not going to fit. Um, so you'll, you'll eventually hit a part where it just, it's not going to line up. And you may maybe be tempted to do something like this, you know, and get that to line up. Uh, but no, that doesn't look like that's going to line up, right? Um, and then you'll find that like you'll actually need the mirrored piece. So let's bring that back I'm here. I'm just going to undo and then I'll bring this over here and let's begin rotating this guy. Again, it went to faces. I'm just going to change it to components and rotate this in here. Let's see, we can start to move this about right here. I think that'll be a good fit right there. So I'll click OK, J for joints. And I will select this midpoint here with that middle edge there. And there we go. And let's do one more piece here. And that's going to be a regular tile here, our last one. And here I can already begin to see this. So if I rotate this like this, I can see that. I tend to see these more <laughs> as t-shirts than hats. So if you look at like this, it looks like a hat. But my mind wants to see it as a t-shirt. So I see like this little fold here and then the two sleeves. Um, so I don't know which way you see it better, but I, I tend to align it by looking at where the sleeves are and there's like a longer sleeve and a smaller sleeve. But this looks like it'll just fit nicely right here. So I'll get it close, click OK, J, and let's bring this edge to this edge there. And let's click OK. All right, now we look at it from a top view and you can just keep going round and round and round, you know, building out your planar tile. And that's how that works. Uh, let me, uh, if you don't want to see all these little symbols here for joints, you can just untoggle your visibility here of the joints. And because these are now, you know, locked in with joints, you can't move them around. Okay, there you have it. I thought it was a neat exercise here. Come and talk a little bit about joints and components while playing around with the Einstein tile. I've got a few other ideas I kind of want to do with this tile, but um, I don't know. We'll see where I go next with it. If you have any other ideas, put them in the comments below and I may explore those avenues. So, all right, I'll leave this one here. If you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Fusion 360, check out some of my resources. If you're someone who gets stuck on a design and you like to have real life help with your designs, I do teach a weekly online class um, that you can join and I'll leave the link below. Oh, and I'll also leave the Fusion 360 file for my uh, Patreon supporters. And so if you're interested in supporting the channel and having access to Fusion files of my designs, check out the link below to my Patreon page. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.